Buffy runs my life so much. She even has to unmute my computer for me from where she is. So <laughs> I'm very thankful for her. Um, Cobble, we need you to end your call over there too. So you can lock it in on LSU softball right now. Focus. Um, but thanks. It's great seeing everybody. Um, thanks for being here. Thanks for taking the time and um, caring about our team. We appreciate it. These girls work really hard and we appreciate the attention and truly think they deserve it. So we have had, um, we've been practicing since last Friday um, and we have had um, a lot of great things already that we've seen from these girls. We have a lot of talent. We have a lot of returners. We have a lot of players. So um, it's been exciting. It was awesome to get them back. Um, and just to, you know, as we keep putting puzzle pieces together of what this schedule looks like and what this season looks like, it's just really enlightening and, and hopeful and just um, feeling like we have a chance to really get this thing going and have a, a solid season. So I think everybody's still scarred from the way it ended last year and, and from losing that. So I think we will take every game um, and, and it will be very precious to us. So they're practicing like that and they feel that. So we're excited to get going and whatever specific questions you guys have for me, um, you can just ask Chelsea. She'll unmute you too, the same way she unmutes me. She will also control your life. <laughs> I think you're open, Jim, you're up, buddy. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, yeah, Beth, how close are y'all to having a schedule? Uh, and I have some questions after that too. Um, we're very close. Um, we, we got approval from the ADs yesterday. So we will be trying to play our full schedule, our regular schedule without adjustment. Um, now the details of what that looks like, I am tying up a lot of loose ends. I've been working on it all morning and yesterday since we got that. Um, I think most of the softball coaches probably put this on hold without, you know, there were some loose ends we needed to tie up, but seems crazy to keep working on it when we didn't know what the parameters were going to be. So we are going to be playing um, eight conference series, 24 conference series, and then we have a max of 56 games. Um, we should be, we have a really nice opening weekend tournament. We should be finalizing details of that. And I think you will see that uh, probably early next week once we get everybody on the same page with game times and things like that. But I'm excited. It's a really challenging schedule. Uh, really tough. I think we've got some great opponents coming to Tiger Park. So I think it is going to be fun. And I think it's going to prepare our team and put us in a really good spot to do big things this year. Okay. The NCAA allowed for everybody to come back senior or seniors or not. Um, did you get everybody back or wh which players uh, uh, didn't come back? I'd sat probably more uh, easier to mention the ones who didn't. Yeah. The only player that didn't return was Claire Weinberger. She graduated and has started working and doing great things. She's a vet tech and she's um, doing a lot of cool things. We're really proud of her. She's the only one that decided not to return. Okay. And uh, what uh, you started practicing. So you've gotten an idea of, uh, you know, what you're going to have to deal with. What, what did you see? What was most noticeable about the team when they came back and started practicing again? I mean, I keep telling them every day that I don't know if the best team wins this year. I think it's a team that deals with all of the challenges and adversity that we're presented with this season, um, whether it be testing protocols or travel restrictions or you name it. I think all of the challenges, their um, online classes, I mean, I can keep listing over and over and you guys know a lot of them, but I think the team that deals with the challenges this year um, is going to be the team that succeeds. And I think it is going to be one of the, I don't know if it's important, but most well-deserved national championships or SEC championships, I just think the battle um, to succeed in these conditions is going to say a lot more about your program than just if you're good at softball. I think it's going to show a lot of things about the character of people that you have involved. Um, and, you know, I'm excited to tackle these challenges. I think we have a lot of things in front of us and I'm confident this team can play softball, but we have other things on the table. We've got to manage 29 people. We've got to have team chemistry with larger rosters. We've got a whole list of, of things we need to check off our list. Yeah. Kind of like you, uh, kind of like Jim, I got a lot of questions. So I, I did a rough count. I got 27. You have 29 players that you're trying 29. to work how do you, uh, obviously the logistics of that is just alone a challenge. How do you, how do you go there? Well, we ran a pretty, what I thought was a cool system this fall. I don't know if anybody else did, but um, you know, we ran kind of a pod system this fall and I found it to be super 
competitive. Um, you know, the pods competed against each other a lot. And I found the whole thing super competitive and I, I really enjoyed it. And I can tell you, if we wouldn't have had the situation we're in, it would never have changed how I ran practice. And I loved it. So I think that the challenge really made me grow as a coach. And I like where we landed with it. We are running a modified version of that system so far this spring. So we still have them in pods. Um, some days they get to be in a larger group and they get to feel the whole team on the field together. Um, other days they stay in these groups, but these groups allow us just, we shorten their time on the field. We give them a lot of individual attention. The pods have real camaraderie that's very competitive against the other ones. So, um, you know, and the pods were developed too, just so you know, based on who their roommates are. So it was like, whoever you chose to live with this year. Um, it wasn't set by starter, non-starter class. It was chosen by roommates just to keep them safe um, throughout COVID, but it's been fun and challenging. And I think we're doing the best we can and I hope it works. Is softball the most normal thing that you guys do? And we've seen the importance of, you know, like kind of giving the kids the outlet that they don't have socially. Uh, have you noticed that? Have you really tried to ratchet up maybe some of the, the mental checks and, and, and maybe just, you know, easing of the burden? Yeah, our team has a really hard time that they don't just have free reign with each other right now. You know, we're still trying hard to keep them within their groups and their pods. And I think they have trouble thinking like, oh, I can't just go out to dinner with so-and-so. Um, it's really challenging for them. It's really hard. So um, I think they feel a lot of these things all day. And in practice, it even feels different. Like if you're waiting to base run, now we're, we've got cones out and you're standing, you know, six feet apart down the sidelines. I think it looks very professional personally, but um, it, you're feeling it all the time. Even when you're out here, um, softball even feels a little different, you know, because there's two pitchers taking defense and I'm yelling, stay six feet apart. You know, I'm not even yelling, like move your feet or the normal like coach stuff. I'm yelling, stay six feet apart. Right. Um, so I think it feels different, but yesterday for the first time, and again, we did this safely in, in a little modified way, but the whole team was actually present at the same time on the field. Um, half were base running and half were taking defense. And it was like just the volume and everybody cheering for everybody and participating um, that felt awesome. And I think everybody uh, really liked that. So the more often we can find safe ways to do that, I think the more softball will feel normal. Beth, um, you guys had to suspend last season, uh, and a half, you know, halfway through or early, early on, and uh, things are, the you know, obviously things with the coronavirus are worse even now, you know, in terms of numbers and that sort of thing. They were when all these spring sports were suspended. What gives you confidence or concern that y'all can get through a whole season? Because it seems to be a commitment nationwide to try to push forward, and obviously maybe football gave y'all a, a template. But, you know, this, you know, you know, other coaches have said, you know, uh, like, in, you know, Jay or or Will have said, you know, they expect delays. They expect, you know, you know issues to come up during the season. So how, how do you how do you how confident are you that you can push forward dis despite the fact that you're going to have a lot of uncertainty and, and things that could happen during the season? Yeah, there's no question that I think the team that deals with the adversity the best, like I said, is the team that's going to end up the champion this year. Um, I think I feel very fortunate that we're an outdoor sport. I think we have some things working in our favor. I think we can be a little bit safer in some areas being outdoor. I think that's been proven. So I feel good about us being outdoors. And then it's another day and every day I'm fortunate to be at LSU, but I'm just so fortunate to be at LSU where we have such resources, so many people on our side, so much support that are just always giving us the cutting edge information um, that can give us the truly the best practices for how to stay safe and then perform at an elite level. So I'm really thankful that we're at LSU. I'm thankful every day for that, but especially right now. And how do you feel about the season as a whole, you know, getting, getting through it? Yeah, I, I agree. I think there will be delays. I think, you know, as a conference, we've really tried to find ways where we can build in um, situations. You know, we, we're going to have a makeup opportunity late in the season if we need to make up some games like we're trying to. And I'm just trying to get our schedule as close to the 56 as possible, knowing that um, if we get close to 56, you know, hopefully we'll play 50 or, or something like that. You know what I mean? So I think we're all expecting there to be issues and we're just trying to do everything we can to give these guys the season that they deserve. Hey Beth, uh, two questions. One kind of 
bouncing off Scott's question there. Have you talked to some of the other coaches on how they've handled the stops and starts, uh, you know, cancellations, postponements, just the big picture on how to deal with those things? And then secondly, obviously with everybody coming back, I'm guessing the strengths of the team are just like the strengths of the team a year ago going into the season. Yeah, I have definitely reached out to both Fran and Nikki. And then uh, I, I also have been on the phone with Sean Hudson and, and Dan Gaston, who is her administrator, just since they're an outdoor sport and we kind of match them uh, pretty well. But I have definitely leaned on them to see the things that work, that didn't work, to get them prepared. So we're lucky we have a really tight network of coaches here at LSU and a lot of excellent coaches that can, you know, give us trusted advice. So I'm glad that I have those guys. And then the other SEC coaches we have spent countless hours um, on the phone together on Zoom calls, um, countless, uh, trying to make this thing work. So I think we're all leaning on each other. And for SEC softball, lean on each other. We're doing good. We're really, um, you know, we're really leaning on each other and trying to find the best practices to have the best season. And of course, there's so much respect for everybody in the SEC. Um, we have some awesome coaches, some really intelligent people in this league. So I think getting everybody's ideas in the same place has been really beneficial for us too. Um, as far as the team goes, I think, um, I, I don't know where to start with our strengths. I am proud of this team. I like a lot of things that we do. I think we're going to bring something to the table on every aspect. I think our defense is going to be better than last year. I think just because we had some young players and some key spots, Taylor Pleasance, and she didn't get a full year under her belt, but she's still, um, you know, seasoned a year at shortstop. I think that is going to help us. And then we have some kids that are so veteran that they do my job. I mean, um, when Amanda Doyle's in the infield, like I can just hit balls and hit reps. And honestly, I could probably hand the bat over to her and she could hit the reps too. And uh, coach the team, you know, but uh, we have some veterans and some spots that just make a huge difference every day. Um, our pitching staff is all returned and, and we know they had a really solid season last year. We also added Morgan Smith, a freshman from Arizona, who is a really special player to that group, making them even stronger. Um, then I like our offense, a really good balance of speed and power. So, you know, I, I think I've had an Andrews in the outfield every year that I've been here, it feels like, um, but continuing to have her uh, be the table setter for us a year uh, under Sierra's belt. Uh, Sierra Briggs, she's another special one. And then you add it to the power in our middle of our lineup with Georgia Clark, Pleasant, Sinceri, who's obviously proven, you know, I think we have a lot of things going for us there too. My question was just a, a little bit more schedule based. Have they given you some parameters as far as who you can schedule? Are you trying to keep it local to mitigate, you know, risk, anything like that? And then and then I guess if you do go on the road, is, is it buses only? Are you having to get more buses than ever? Uh, how does this kind of work for you? I, I don't know that we have specific parameters, but we are trying to do some of those things. Like you said, we are trying to um, take more buses or you know play more regionally. Um, we're still playing out of region a couple of times, but um, we are still trying to do some of that stuff for sure, just to keep them safe as best as possible. And of course, it's not always ideal. You know, we've got to try to play the best schedule that we can. Um, so there are some times where we're making exceptions, but we're dealing closely with our administration and we're trying to find the best practices. <coughs> hey Beth, uh, have you had any uh, unexpected leaders emerge? I mean, this is the, these are the kind of times where you, you see something uh, emerge out of somebody maybe you didn't expect it from or, and who have been the leaders? Um, you know, returning those upperclassmen, I think, is big. I think Amanda Doyle, I would say, you know, last year she was one of the only upperclassmen in the infield. And Amanda Doyle has been a pretty quiet player for her entire time. But I really pushed her a lot last year to lead us and speak. And we're still seeing so many great things out of her. So I love what she brings to us. And then the younger kids in the infield with Georgia Clark and Taylor Pleasance, they're starting to talk more and more. Morgan Cummins behind the plate is just really solid. And I think as these kids are becoming sophomores and juniors, they can focus a little bit less on themselves and their own fundamentals because they have a handle on that and they can start kind of turning their efforts outward to the team. So I think as these guys are aging and they're feeling better and better about what they're doing, they're able to really start leading us in the right direction. Hey coach, it's Michelle Smith. 
Hey, um, Michelle. Hey, I us. really, absolutely. I, you know what? I'm, I'm just, I'm dying for softball. So when I saw this come across, I was like, oh, I got to get on this. <laughs> um, so I, I guess my question would be for you, uh, our sport, we don't really um, hear of red shirts a lot. How does a, a how does a roster of twenty nine athletes does do you do you have to manage now our sport a little bit differently and your scholarships and and the roster positions? How do you look at that and and not even just for your potential uh, you know freshmen that have come in, but even maybe other upperclassmen that might need um, maybe say another year of development. How, how does that uh, work into your your game plan? Maybe not just even this year, but moving forward. Well, one thing that's cool, and I agree with you, it's not something that I've, I've virtually not ever redshirted a player that wasn't due to an injury. I, I can't even think of a time that I've done it, honestly. Um, but one thing that we saw was, I mean, the fact that you can take any of our freshmen who are now freshmen again, right, but still sophomores, um, and to look at the year of development that they had without even truly really playing a full season of games, it is amazing to see the difference yeah. in where they are today as where they were in opening day last year. So I do think that there's some validity in doing it. I do think that it is something that, you know, we're going to have to consider with the numbers that we have. Um, we haven't made any of those decisions yet. I, I felt like it was too soon and we should see and give everybody, you know, the best chance they can to really develop as, as athletes. Um, but I see it being as an important concept moving forward. And I know there's other teams that have utilized it and had a lot of success with it. So, you know, I think we'll just have to kind of see if that model works well for us. But I, I do think it's going to become come into play more than it ever has before. All right, we got time for one more. Uh, Rabelais, let me unmute you. Uh, Beth, it's kind of hard to believe that you're going into your 10th season at LSU. Uh, just, uh, you know, I, I, you probably don't have a whole lot of time for introspection with all this going on and, and raising kids and that sort of thing. But but uh, you've done, a, there's been a lot with the program, a lot of success since you've been here. You've added a lot of facilities and stuff like that. You know, is could you imagine where it is, the program, you know, when, when, from when you started and, and, uh, and how, where are you in terms of, where you'd like to see it go. Yeah, it's funny. When you're talking about that, I can like still picture myself walking down the hallway the first time, thinking about how amazing Tiger Park was and just thinking like, wow, I really could be the coach here. Um, you know, when I first came and how cool that was. And, and, you know, that still feels like just yesterday. And then I realized, wait, Nick and I came here, just us, no kids. And now we have these three girls running around and they're seven. So um, you know, obviously it's been 10 years and it's been an amazing 10 years with a lot of players that have done so much for this program and a lot of special people from all over the country that have given so much um, to LSU. So I'm really proud of this decade at LSU. It's been awesome. The addition of the mic, um, our, you know, hitting and weight room facility is just second to none. And, and the commitment of LSU and the Moore family to make that happen for us. Just amazing. So, um, you know, I, I can't think of a lot of places um, that could be any better. Um, you know, I think this is just the ultimate place. When, when we walked out of that, my daughter was with me in the mic the other day and we walked out of there. She's seven. She's in first grade. And she said, mom, that place is just outstanding. It's like a softball wonderland. That's what she told me. So the mic is the softball wonderland. And I thought, you're really right about that, Taryn. You're right on it. So um, to me, LSU is a softball wonderland, and I'm thankful to be here every single day.